Unit 1, Primitive Types, Lecture 1, Basic Java Syntax. Now this lecture should be a review of what we did in week 1, but it is always good to review what we did in week 1. Alright, Java, why Java? Well, Java is a programming language that is still used today. Even though we have these new programming languages come up um, that may seem like that they're more relevant, it's still used in um, common applications. More importantly for this class, Java is the language used on your AP CSA exam. So that's reason enough in and of itself. Now Java is a programming language, which means that we use it to tell a computer what to do. Now, we have different programming languages. We have Java, we have Python, we have Ruby. So Java is just a certain programming language. It's a high level programming language, which means it's designed more to be easily read and edited by humans than a lower level programming language like assembly or machine language. Okay, so because it's written in a higher level programming language, your computer cannot understand it as is. And so what we do is we compile our files using the software that we downloaded, um, but we compile our files um, so that way it converts it to a language that is something the computer can uh, execute. Now we have two types of files. If you notice here, and we're not looking at that one yet, um, if you notice here, I have a class named Fi My First Program. And over here, we have My First Program.java. This is considered our source code. It is the file that we read, edit, share with other people who can also read and edit it. But our computer does not understand this. And so when we press this little green plus sign, this green plus sign takes this source code and it compiles it into something called bytecode. And you'll notice that we have two files that are bo both called my first program. Our source code says .java and then this .class is considered our bytecode. And so this is what, when we click this, um, this little red guy here running, that is what the computer will execute. So we have source code for us and bytecode for the computer. So let's go over some terminology. A class is a modular program that can contain executable code. So we've written some very basic programs and I'm just going to go to Replit really quick. I'm going to start coding with Java. You'll notice that here we have a class, once it boots, named main and we have this executable code in it. So this is a class. But one of the most powerful things about Java is it is an object-oriented programming language which means that we can encapsulate characteristics and behaviors of different objects. So for example, animals, we can start to figure out what are the attributes of a dog or what can a dog do, what behaviors can a dog do, and how can we translate that into a program or a cat or a teacher or a Toyota vehicle or a sedan. So we can start to think about these objects that exist in the real world and start to brainstorm what characteristics and what behaviors we would want to put in a program. A statement is an executable piece of code that represents a complete command to the computer. What? Well, here we've done one before. This system.out.println hello world. That's an executable piece of code. This statement is telling the computer to display hello world to the console. And so that's precisely what it does when I click run. And it thinks for a second and then another second. And eventually over here you'll see hello world. And so this was a statement that was executed by the computer. We asked it to display hello world and indeed it did. A method is a named sequence of statements that can be executed together to perform a particular action or computation. computation. 
For now, we've only had one method, and that is this method. It is called the main method. The main method is a very important method because it is where execution starts and stops in a program. When I click run, it starts on the first line inside this method and it continues on until it reaches the last line in the method. However, soon enough, we will write additional methods. Now, why would we want to write methods? Because we don't want to be redundant. We want to make our life simpler. So imagine if every day for me to get from home to school, I had to look at the directions every single day. That would get tedious. Same idea, if, the com if I had to every day tell a computer, do this, 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 that would get tedious. So instead, I just group all those statements together and I give it a name, like go to school. And then every time I say go to school, the computer would know what it's supposed to do. It would still need this step of list of instructions, but I don't have to constantly say do this, 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 this. I've grouped it together now. Think of it as um, saving it away. Like a recipe, for example. Um, you don't have to constantly go through the recipe and write it down every single time. You have the recipe card, you can just refer to it when you need to. All right. So in a Java program, we have several important pieces. We have the class name. Now the class name by convention should be a capital letter. Here the class name is main, it has a capital M. Here the class name is my first program. Notice it starts with a capital letter. Also each additional word part of the class name starts with a capital letter. Okay, then we have um, methods. Like I said, up to this point, we've only learned one method. That's our main method. It's a named group of statements. So every time I run my main method, it's going to go through the list of statements and execute them in sequence from first to last. Occasionally, it may come across a selection statement where it makes a decision or an iteration where it repeats a group of statements. But in general, it's going to start at the beginning and go to the end. Every executable Java program consists of a class called a driver class. What does that mean? It means if I want to be able to click run, I have to have a main method. Now I can compile files that don't have main methods. And in fact, as we get more advanced, not of all of our classes will have a main method but we'll create something called a driver class that has a main method that drives our um, execution of our program. Okay, all right. So we've already done our first program in Replit. We already looked at it, so I'm going to bypass this slide. And moving on to file naming, as I um, told you just a minute ago, our file or our class names by convention start with capital letters. But also important is that when I save this file, I have to make sure that this matches exactly the file name. So here, my first program, and over here, my first program are spelled identically with capitalization in the identical spots. Java is a case sensitive language, which means capital J and lowercase j are two different characters. And so here, if I spell this with capital M, I have to have a capital M, etc. So your file name and your class name have to match. So we've already talked about two statements, print and print line. So remember the biggest difference is not what happens in the printing process, but what happens after the printing process. In a print line statement, after I display the text found inside here, it moves on to a new line, and here the cursor remains where it was. So for example, here, um, my class is called welcome. I have the main method. The first statement is asking me to display hi there, and then it's telling me to move on to a new line after doing that. So I say hi there, and move on to a new line. 
So then when I come across my second statement, I display welcome to APCSA, and then this is telling me to move a new line. So after these two statements are executed, my cursor is actually here on line three. Now it's important you spell system with a capital S, and then print line, sometimes in the past my students have thought of this as the number one, and it's not a number one, it's an L, short for line. Also notice that whenever I have text, I put it inside quotation marks, even though those quotation marks don't display, and it ends in a semicolon. And so these are syntax rules that you must abide by, otherwise you will not be able to compile or run your program. Here's the second example. So what happens here is I say hi there, and upon printing hi there, this is just a print statement, my cursor stays at the end of the exclamation point. And so then when it moves on to my second statement, and I say welcome to APCSA, it's going to pick up where it left off. And upon completion of that, it's going to move on to a new line. And so at the end of the second statement, I'm going to be here. And then we will learn Java. It's going to print that out. And my cursor is going to stay on that line because this is just going to stay print. So then if I were to add more statements, it would pick up from here where it left off. All right, so what I would like you to do is pause this video and try to find all the errors that you can. So pause for real and try to find the errors. All right, so let's see what the errors are. So here you'll notice I've copied the code in here and let's go through this. So I'm gonna press compile and the first thing it points to is here, it's saying on line one. Now, if you press this little thing right here, turn the line numbers on, you can see the line numbers. All right, on line one, it says class interface or enum expected. It's pointing to this word, which is supposed to say public. So I'm going to type that. Now, every time you make an edit, every time you fix something, press compile again, because some of your mistakes could have automatically resolved themselves. All right, you'll notice here public class errors. It's pointing at the end and it's saying it's expecting a curly brace which is true, every time you start a class, you need to have a curly um, bracket opening it up. All right, every time I fix it, I'm gonna press compile. Now it's pointing here on line three, it's saying that it's expecting a semicolon, so I'm gonna give it a semicolon, and then I'm gonna press compile. And then now it's gonna print on line four, and it says we have an unclosed literal string, so you'll notice I opened up my quotation marks, but I never closed them, so I'm gonna press compile again. And then here it says this is not a statement. Now, why is it not a statement? Well, here print should be lowercase, and I'm also missing my out, and I need to have parentheses here, and I need to close my parentheses here. All right, so let's see. So I compile it again, and now I have um, an error that says I've reached the end of the file while parsing. Normally it means that you're missing a curly bracket. So you'll notice here I opened up my class and I closed my class. I opened up my main method, but I never closed that off, so I'm gonna put one here. I opened up two curly braces, I need to close the two curly braces. All right, so I'm gonna compile it. And now it's printing here, it's saying that this does not exist. And the reason is because that's not how we spell system, it's case sensitive, so I can do a capital S. And then there we go, if I were to run it, um, it says no main methods, but it has a main method. That makes no sense. It compiled fine. But when I run it, it says no main method. What in the world? It says main. Ah, but if you look inside here, this says string, but in the version we need, we're supposed to have square brackets. And so that's a mistake you might make. So if you are able to compile it and you're able to run it, you're good. Otherwise, you messed up the main method header. Okay, all right, so there's the corrected version. Let's look here. Strings is a sequence of characters to be print, uh, printed. It can be inside um, the double quotation marks, super short or longer, but you can't put it over multiple lines and you, and you can't put the double quotation mark in. Soon, you'll learn ways that you could make a string little, literal span multiple lines and how you can display a quotation mark, but this is not the appropriate way of doing that. 
So comments we talked about, there are two types that we're going to use in here. We're going to use single line comments. Now single line comments can occur on a line all by themselves, or they can occur at the end of a, a line of code. We also have multi-line comments. Notice this one, you have to have something at the beginning and the end of the comment. Now even though it's considered a multi-line comment, you could just have it on one line. So why do we use comments? Well, we put them at the top of our file to kind of explain who wrote the, the, the program and what the purpose of the program is. Um, we can put them at the start of every method, which we don't really know much other than our main methods, but those will be more relevant in the coming weeks, or to explain complex pieces of code. Chances are, in the real world, you're not going to be the only person working on a program and other people are going to be looking at it or possibly in the future editing it. So good commenting is important. That doesn't mean you write an essay for your comments. Um, think of it more as a thesis statement rather than a thesis. Get to the point. What is the point of this block of code? What is the point of this method, etc. So for example here, this is a multi-line comment in which the person puts their name and the purpose of the program. And then this is an example of describing a block of statements so the first verse of a song, the second verse of a song. And so these would be considered single line comments. Lastly, by convention, Miss Gilray expects you to make your programs look nice with proper indentation, proper white space. Although Java would accept this program and Java would be fine with this program, Miss Gilray would not. And here, is how you would properly format it. Notice every time you move to a new sublevel, you indent, your curly brackets line up, etc.